Hey, thank you so much for taking the time to check out Crossroads' YouTube page. Also, if you like what you see here today, check out our website at crossroadsantioch.org. You can enjoy us every week with our online sermons and even be a part of our digital small groups. We would love to have you part of our fellowship. Uh, if you enjoy what you hear today, please hit the subscribe button right below here. Hope you enjoy the message. God bless you. Jesus is teaching the followers that followed him everywhere when he would walk to a different city and then he would preach and then teach. And But at this point, it says at the beginning of it that there were tax collectors and sinners who walked with him and was listening with to him. They were coming, and they wanted more. Like, he was speaking the truth, and they were, like, wanting more out of it. They were wanting to hear him more. They were wanting to experience more because they had never heard it before. And the craziest thing is the Pharisees, the Pharisees that were talking about the sinners, like Jesus meeting with the sinners and Jesus uh, talking, teaching these people. The craziest thing is those Pharisees, some of them didn't even teach those people because they said they were unclean people. They wouldn't even talk to those people because they looked down on them and they said, well, they're dirty and they're unclean and they're sinners and, and we, don't, we don't even teach those people. We don't, we don't want Jewish people. Jesus was a Jew, right? They didn't want the sinners and the tax collectors, they didn't want the Jews to be talking to those people and hanging out with those people, and eating with those people, and being with those people. So these Pharisees were super mad about, like, they were really mad about not, like, him not, him meeting and talking and teaching these people, because some of them didn't even know. And that's why they wanted more. They wanted more because people didn't talk to them. They wanted more because they didn't hear about God, like, the truth. They didn't hear the truth about God. They wanted more from it. They wanted Jesus. Jesus was in here walking around speaking the truth like they've never heard it before. But he was just speaking the truth. He was telling them how his father was. He was telling them how much love his father had for him. And if we think about it in the times today, there are people out there today that just need to hear the truth. And they're going to want more. And then they're going to come to church. And they're going to get saved. And, like, the trend goes on. And they're going to be the excited ones going out and trying to find that one. So, uh, can I preach now? Um, so, like, what, uh, what, what I want to do first is I want to pray, because the rest of this, I want it to go in order that makes sense, and I can't do it myself, um, because I've tried overnight. Every, every time I read it, I was just, in my brain, it made sense, but it didn't go in order. So, Lord, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you so much for this word that you have just projected onto this paper and, and project that word through me. Uh, just use my voice for you to speak um, because I know that that's how you work. I know you've tied this together. Someone in here is supposed to hear this. I, it's, it's, it's made me open my eyes to some things, Lord, but just use my mouth, use my voice to speak this word that you have for us and bless someone or multiple people with it, Lord. And we thank you for that. And we praise you for that. So, my first point, point number one, if you're taking notes, live the word of God. So, um, like I was saying, in Luke, we're going to start in Luke 15, 1 through 7, uh, the tax collectors and other notorious sinners often came to listen to Jesus teach. This made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he is associating with such sinful people and even eating with them. <clears throat> so Jesus told them this story. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go search for the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. When he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over the lost sinner who repents and turns to God over the 99 others who are righteous and have straight, have stayed, haven't strayed away. So, 
some people look at this verse as being almost a negative ending to it because the people that you know the people that come to church and do the right thing and do the things that they want are like you know whatever about them right but no uh, we'll get to see what God says what Jesus is teaching about those people the people maybe most of the people in this room and what he's talking about is is God wants everyone God loves everyone and the ones that are saved should know that God loves them and the ones that aren't saved don't know that God loves them yet. They, they, all they see is darkness, or they see evil ways, or they maybe just don't know him. And so what we need to do as the people of believers and love, the ones that know love, we need to be the ones going after that one. So um, the Pharisees were mad um, because they were speaking to sinners and unclean people, but this shows how much Jesus had love Jesus had for people. So like him even just teaching these people showed the love that he had. Like the the Pharisees didn't have love for people. They wanted to be the smartest, the brightest, the best, the religious, you know, I am holy, you know, those kind of people. That's like that's what they wanted to be seen as. And Jesus comes in like I don't know, I don't know if this is a good reference, but like, you know, the Molly Cyrus song? Like a wreck. Like that is how Jesus came in, right? And it was like amazing. So he he just came in and just changed everything. And and he didn't really do it in a way that was mean, or he didn't do it in a way that was hateful. He didn't do it in a way that was like, you're going to hell. Like he was like, This is what my father says. This is why I'm here. I love everyone. I'm going to teach everyone. And that's how we got to be in our day-to-day lives. We got to just be teaching and loving and showing people the love that God has for us. Like, we know what he's done for us. We just got to show that. So, in a side note, the, the parables, the, Jesus is speaking in parables. So, the reason he does that is to talk to different groups of people and makes them think about it. And that's why these people wanted more, because maybe they didn't understand the full word that he was preaching. Maybe they, didn't, they just wanted to hear the story, but he spoke it to three different groups in a way, the same thing. It's different. It's the same theme in all three verses, or all three uh, parts of this chapter. So, you know, how the Bible, we, the Bible was written in, a, in just, just words. It was just like notes in a way, like if I was just writing a bunch of notes about what I was thinking or writing a journal. But we have broken it down and translated it, made it easier to read and put numbers one through however many on it and broke it down into chapters. It just all ran together, just somebody telling a story, like I was reading a book. So they broke it down, and then they tell you the the first one that I just read was the parable of the lost sheep, right? He goes and finds his sheep. So he was talking to farmers, right? He had people following him that were farmers, and they, they understood sheep or sheep herders or, or somebody like that. So he's speaking to a specific crowd, but it's still for a general crowd. The second one, he talks about the lost coin. And so we got to remember there are tax collectors in this group, and the tax collectors are the ones who love money. And so Jesus is speaking about a coin, and they're like, oh, man, money. Yeah, I'm going to listen to this, right? Uh, not like, let me have all your money. He was like, this is a story about money. And a tax collector, which we'll read it, if they would have lost, lost some money, they were probably going to be taken care of or dealt with, right, uh, for, from their, their authorities. Um, so we just got to think about that because he is speaking to everyone. But he's talking in the same topic in three different ways. So the next one is Luke 15, 8 through 10. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins. So one silver coin, one silver coin is a, is a full day's wage in that time. So, I mean, average day's wage, $100, $200, maybe more, you know, if you're amazing. But um, $100 to $200, let's just say. She's lost this in a coin. It's so easy if we could just carry a coin around and throw. But anyways, um, $100 to $200, she's lost this. 
she won't, she, won't she light a lamp and sweep the entire house to search for it until she finds it? And when she finds it, she will call her friends and neighbors and say, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost coin. In the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. So we might not know when someone repents. But think about the angels in heaven when somebody hears a word and they, maybe they repent on a Wednesday it doesn't even matter. Maybe they repent after they go to a group. Maybe they repent after they just have a time of a day that's just like, I can't do this. But the, the angels in heaven rejoice because of one sinner's repentance. And we are all sinners. Remember this. Like, I'm no better than anybody else. I'm preaching to the choir, maybe. But I am a, I am a sinner. I want you all to know that. I make mistakes. But I repent of them, and I know to repent of them. So what we got to teach people is to know to repent for those, sin, those sins. So he's teaching them how to repent. He's teaching them how to be saved. He's teaching the people what they need to do to be saved. And he's doing it to different groups. Remember that. We need to be joyful and excited like the angels are. When we have somebody that we know, maybe they come to us to pray for them and they want to ask for forgiveness through us, through our prayers, through their prayers, praying together. We need to be joyful in that. We need to, like, if they want us, like, maybe we just tell someone else that is our spiritual advisor or someone, we need to be excited about those. We need to let those people know that we're excited about it. So when you ask for forgiveness, you're past is washed away. I know how it was for me. So I had, um, honestly, I had went probably four years. It was probably four years where I am repented for my sins. I'm just being real. Like, I never really repented for my sins because I did the same sin over and over again. I never actually repented for it. So I was still living in a lie. I was still sinning, and I knew that I was like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to go do it this week. And um, I got the feelings, and I, I got like, oh, man, this is like, I'm, this is real. And then I would first think about it, and I wouldn't fight it with anything. And what I used to fight it was Scripture. When I finally, when I finally repented, fully repented of my sins, when I finally understood what it meant to repent of my sins, like truly mean it, not ever want to do it again, think it's the worst thing in the world, the love of God flew over me like no other. And there was no like huge setting for it. There was no like crazy awesome worship like we had this morning. There was no like, like altar time. There was, it was one night when I just had a moment where I was just like, I can't do this anymore. And I was like, Lord, I am sorry. And it flooded me. Like, I had a night that was unforgettable. And I will never forget it. And that's how he wants us to be. He wants us to, to just repent of our sins and be truthful and know that he loves us. Knowing that he loves us. Knowing that he will come after the one. And be excited about the one coming back to him and just saying sorry and really meaning sorry, right? If we're talking about love, I mean, how many times in a relationship of love have you said sorry to somebody? Like, I know I've said it a lot. Like, I'm sorry, Jenny. Like, I, I have said it a lot. Um, I'm not the brightest in the world either. And that's why I've said it so much. But, like... It, love is that way and that's why we want a relationship with God because we have to have that relationship with him it's not a real relationship if you don't ever say you're sorry to me I mean you're always like men I'm sorry women don't ever make mistakes uh, but <laughs> men we make mistakes like and they're not even big sometimes jeez like forgot to take the trash out and the trash can's empty like what <laughs> 
hey, the trash men are not really wanting to dump one bag of trash on a big trash can. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, Jenny. Uh, <laughs> Uh, small issues, right? First world issues. Um, but that brings us to our second point. Love the Father with all your heart and loving our neighbors as ourselves. Because that's exactly what Jesus told us to do. So talking about the way we used to be and asking forgiveness and everything, Paul says it in Titus 3, uh, 3, 3 through 7. He says, Once we too were foolish and disobedient, we were misled and became slaves of many lusts and pleasures. Our lives were full of envy and evil. We hated each other. But when God our Savior revealed his kindness and love, he saved us, not because of the righteous things that we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us new birth in the new life of the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out his Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Because of His grace, He made us right in His sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. This is the confidence that we need to have to share the love that Jesus had for other people. Because Jesus, in the, in the New Testament, in the Gospels, to me, what I read in the Gospels is Jesus showing us physically being on earth showing us how we're supposed to be and if we are if we are going to be like jesus if we are going to live the way jesus lived we have to have love for everyone and the only way we can have love for everyone is having a relationship with god and the only way to have a relationship with god is through jesus christ knowing that he saved us knowing that he came down on this earth to show us how to be and then he died for our sins So that's why we have to be sorry for our sins. That's why we have to be sorry because we are sinful people. And just like when he was in before, when he was preaching and the Pharisees got mad, like he was preaching to the people that he was showing us who we need to be talking to. He's showing us that we need to be talking to the sinners, the people that are the evildoers or tax collectors or, you know, corrupt people. Like those are the people that we need to be witnessing to. Those are the people that we need to be showing how to be saved. Showing the love. Right? So, I understand. We talked about this in our group this week. Um, just because of Pastor Brian's sermon last week, and it was just being that one person to be able to change the life and the future of another person. Talking to somebody. And um, being that one person and, under, and loving that one person and, and having, talking to that one person, we don't even know what that could be that we said. We could have been done it in passing, just being nice to someone. Maybe just opening the door for someone. Maybe, what's that line that they call when they start? Most of the time it's Chick-fil-A, but like they start at other places where like somebody buys the food behind the person. Pay it forward. That's, yeah. So like... We could do that, and it could change somebody's life. We could hand a guy money on the side of the street and just tell him that Jesus loves him, and that could change his future. That could change his kid's future. That could change his generations to come. But it's not easy to realize when those things come up because God will put us in those places. God will purposely put us in a place that we're supposed to talk to one person. We're supposed to find that one for him to get excited about. And we get caught up in our busy lives, and we get caught up in living, just going, going, and going, and going, and I understand, I do it too, I get so caught up, like this is this time, this time, this time, this time, but sometimes we just need to just step back and realize what God's putting in front of us, and we need to talk to that person, maybe if it's just for a minute, we need to talk to that person and love that person, but also, There are other people, so we're talking about asking for forgiveness, but sometimes we may have to give forgiveness. So giving forgiveness to someone else is hard. (laughs) Like, uh, I'm, we are, we are earthly people, um, flesh living people a lot of the times, and the world tells us that if they did you wrong, you know, 
shun them, don't talk to them. You know, don't, don't have a relationship with that person. Forget about that person. Don't ever talk to them again. But sometimes, sometimes we just got to love that person. We got to show the forgiveness of love that Jesus showed us, that God has for us. And we got to just, just love on that person. And we can get caught up in those things, being busy and not forgiving somebody and doing things like that. But, man, is it worth that person's life? Is it worth that person's future? Is, that worth, if it, is it worth their great-grandchildren's future? Right? we got to be aware of those things because that's what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is being aware of things like that. So bear with me on the next scripture. It's a lot of reading. But what it's talking about is a story like that. And, it's, and he talks about this to, he talks about, to me, what I read out of this was, what he showed me out of this was, this talks about forgiving someone. This talks about loving someone. This talks about not holding grudges against someone. <laughs> like, this talks about true, true love. This talks about love for a one person that the world might think is nuts. This next parable talks about that never-ending love, that love, that reckless love. And that's what it is to me. So, in Luke 15, 11 through 32, to illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. So this is the third time he's telling the same story. Remember, a man who had two sons, the younger son told his father, I want to share, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed and divided his wealth between his sons. A few days later, his younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land, and there he wasted his money on wild living. About this time, he ran out of money. A great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. He persuaded local farmers to hire him, and, he, and the man sent him to the fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry, he even, even the pods that he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. He couldn't even eat pig food. I mean, come on. Like, when he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home even the hired servants have enough food to spare, and here I'm dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. Has this is like this is the, one of the first scriptures that really like just jumped out to me and spoke to me when I was first starting to believe and and repent, truly repent, because I I came I came to a, a a low time in my life. I came to a point in my life where I could not do it on my own. I was by myself. I had no friends. I had nothing. I could not do it on my own, and I needed somebody to help me. And I was, like, I wasn't going to eat pig food, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I was at that point in the situation that I was in. I was going to eat pig food in a way. That was the, my only thought, the way I could do it to get out. And then someone, one person called me on the phone and invited me to a Wednesday night church. I would have never went if it wasn't at that time. So maybe we're supposed to be aware when we think of somebody. Maybe we're supposed to be uh, understanding that um, I need to call that person because maybe they're, my, why am I thinking of this person? I've never thought about them in a long time. That they're, I mean, whatever it is. Maybe they tried to call me. I need to call them back. We need to be better at communication at this church. No, I'm just, uh, we need to be better at communication in general. We need to be better at, like, when somebody calls us, call them back. Maybe they don't leave a voicemail. Um, but, uh, I don't leave a voicemail, sorry. <laughs> Honest, I call you, and if you don't answer, hopefully you see my missed call um, and call me back. But I will call you back. But, um, but I got to that point where it was just, I couldn't do anything on my own. I, couldn't, I had to have something else. I was like, I have to do something else. And I never thought, God, I never thought that because I didn't know to do that at that time. And then one day, somebody texted me and was like, hey, 
we got Wednesday night church here at Cornerstone. You want to come? I'd been a couple times because of a girl right when I was in youth. I didn't go because of God. I went because of a girl. And uh, I, I found God going that night. And not because of the girl, because of God. And because he was looking for the one, and at that time, I was the one. I was the one he was looking for. So, and while he was still a long way off, or well, he, so he returned to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against you both, heaven and you. I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robes in the house and put it on him. Get the ring for his finger and the sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast. For the son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Meanwhile, the older son is in the fields working. When he returned home, I mean, he's dead tired, right? He's in the fields working. He's been doing it. He's been working for his dad. He's just, he's been doing it. He has been going to church every Sunday. He has been serving in leadership. He's been going to groups on Wednesday. He has been doing all these things. And we're looking for that one, right? And the one has came back, and now we're celebrating that one. We have to be excited about that. We have to be excited about the one. So then the older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. The father came out and begged him, All these years I've been slayed for you. Never, you never once, I never once refused to do a single thing you told me. All the time you never gave me a young goat to, for a feast with my friends. And yet this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on bad stuff. Um, because all the kids are in here. <laughs> Uh, and you celebrate your son of yours coming back, wait, sorry, missed it, and killing the fatted calf. So the fatted calf, like, that was like, that was like the Passover meal. Like, that was like for a special time. That was like our, you know, our $1,000 Thanksgiving meals that we spend, right, on turkeys and, you know, expensive turkeys at the time. Like, if you get a turkey right now for like a quarter of the price you can at Thanksgiving, right? So like, like, that was like that turkey. That was like the expensive one at the time. And they're celebrating. And then the father looked at the son and he said, you have always stayed with me. Everything I have is yours. What we celebrate this happy day, we had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. And Yes, that's, that's what we need to get excited about. People being lost and now being found. That's, that's what the kingdom of God is. That's, what we, that's why we are here. That's why we do this every week. That's why we do the groups. That's why we do an online group. That's why we pray. That's why we have a prayer group. That's why we are working so hard to try to get. Pastor Brian is working so hard to try to get us a place that we can do this more. And we can expand it. And we can grow it. And that's, that's what I really wanted to get out because, because God has his hand in all this. And, and we, can get, we can easily get burnt out doing the things that we do. And it's happened. And we've seen the results of it here, honestly. But we, can, we have to keep going and we have to be excited and we have to continue trying to find that one person because then it's not worth anything. Then we're just coming to meet and say, hey, and then sing some songs. Like, that's all it would be about. And it's not about that. It's about finding the one and being excited about the one and getting into the kingdom of God and having what he promised us back in verse 8, I believe it was. No, verse 10. The same way there's joy in the presence of God angels when one sinner repents. We have to be excited about that. And we have the promises of God to us. So, the third point. Lead others to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's how we need to be. Um, can I get the worship team back over here? So, we've all been blessed. We all have a relationship with Him. 
we have the hands and the feet to go find the one. That's what we are. We are the ones that need to go be in our daily lives and be talking to people and allowing those people to understand that we have the love of God, but we just we don't want them to be following us. There have been places and people and things that follow people, and when that people leave, and when that person leaves and those people leave that, that area, a lot of people leave with them. And the reason a lot of people leave with them is because they're not following the Father. They're not following the right reason. They're following the person. And we can't have that. We don't want you to follow me. We don't want you to follow Brian. We don't want you to follow Terry. We want you to follow God and lead, lead other people to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, so, this card right here. This card right here is the one card that I had lost. And I was, it was found. And I got excited about finding it because I needed it. And I needed it because it has something special in it. It's something special that God kind of wanted me to write down and do. And, and I believe today there's God is calling that one person I know that that one person is in here today and God is calling that one person I knew that one person was going to come last night and and God God is telling you that he loves you and God is telling you that you are the one so what I did was I wrote out a letter to you in this in this letter and that's the one that I needed to find just like the lady finding her lost coin just like the man finding the sheep just like the father finding his son coming back because somebody in here might be coming back may have been lost for a little while may have been doing evil things or whatever I said earlier because um, I'm not going to say that word but coming back to God or maybe the first time coming to God so I want us to understand that we have to celebrate that. We have to just love on those people and be excited for those people and and, and just be there for those people.